Good morning. Good morning. It is Sunday morning. Oh, my God. It is what they call Super Bowl Sunday. That's right. This Sunday. That's right. The Kansas City Chiefs are getting ready to play and go at it with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Going to be a great Super Bowl, I hope. And more importantly, I hope that the Kansas City Chiefs win. That's right. I'm going for my homeboy. Well, I am here this morning, though, to exhort you in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know this month is February. Black History Month is going on. But also, amen, my lovely wife and I celebrated 37 years of marriage. That's right. 37 years. And we appreciate all of you who sold into our lives and sold into that. Amen. And if you haven't done it, of course, you can still do that. All you need to do is go to your cash app, hit that dollar sign, hit that letter R, and then hit that word de- and then write the word determine or type in rather the word determine. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. Amen. We have been blessed to be been married so far, 37 years, have a lovely daughter, Vanika Aree Sharp, and three lovely grandbabies. Amen. Tatum, Adalyn, and Kason. And so we are blessed people, pastor of blessed church. Shout out to NOLCC Yay. this morning. I thank God for you as a church, and I know that the best is yet to come for us. I want to challenge you this morning to get on that phone. That's right. Get on your cell phone. And I want you to text somebody, call somebody. Amen. I want you to make a note. Amen. That this is the day you want them to hear the word of the Lord. So I want you to be radical this morning. That's right. Get on that phone and text them, call them, make that connection with them this morning so they can hear the word of God. It's Sunday morning. Let's go into a powerful song. All rights, all privileges. Go to none other than Bishop Ronald Brown, amen, in a song that I believe would exalt us. Now, it's old-fashioned, amen, good old foot-stumping music, but I think it's powerful in the season that we're in, in a season of pandemic, in a season of economic downturn and economic crisis, as they call it. We are in the kingdom, and God is still proving himself to us that he's worthy of our trust. We can count on him. We can rely on him. God is faithful and we are boasting this year and we're bragging off the faithfulness of God. We are forging ahead as the people of God, knowing that whatever God said he's able to perform, he will do just what he said. But let's go into this song. Amen. By Bishop Ronald Brown. Amen. I met him before he went on to be with the Lord years ago. Amen. But uh, there's a song called There's a Storm Out on the Ocean. And it's moving this away. And if your soul not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. And a lot of people are not anchored in the Lord. Amen. A man of God wrote a song a long time ago about my soul been anchored in the Lord. When you're anchored in God, you won't drift away no matter what comes, no matter what circumstance you face. Let's go into this little song and let's be blessed. Clap those hands, stomp those feet in your house. And all rights and privileges go to uh, the late Bishop Ronald Brown for this song. All right. Hallelujah. Some of y'all standing there looking cute. I got a message for you. Yeah. Don't forget, get on the phone, call somebody, text somebody, hit that share button, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Come on. There's a storm out. <laughs> Glory. Shout out the NOLCC family. Shout out the Vincent Bellamy. And your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Man of God, keep your head up, keep your chin up, keep walking by faith, not by sight. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. If your soul not anchored in Jesus, Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, clap those hands with us this morning. Shout about the fact that you are anchored in Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Woo! Shout out to Gary Brown this morning. Shout out to Leangle Teal and Curtis Bryan. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and praise him in your bedroom. Praise him in your kitchen. Praise him in your living room. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Amen for Bishop the late. Bishop Ronald Brown, amen, putting together that little song, encouraging people to be at their soul, get their will, their mind, their emotions anchored in the Lord or anchored in Jesus Christ. That's the one that will hold you together no matter what we face in life, no matter what we do in life. It depends on who or what you got yourself anchored to. If you're anchored in your house, what's going to happen if a fire destroys your house. What would happen if the flood, <clears throat> like what happened to us in 1999, amen? Now forget, September 1999, our house was flooded, amen? But we weren't anchored in our house. We were anchored in Jesus. Hallelujah. When you're anchored in the Lord, you understand you can bounce back, you can make a comeback, and God will give you double for your trouble. Hallelujah. So I thank God for that little mini song or that little quick song this morning. I hope it helped you. I hope it strengthened you this morning. Let's get ready to go in the word of God. Let's get ready to pray. Amen. And go in the word of God. Father, I thank you for the word, the richness of it, the fatness of it, the hope that it brings to our heart, the strength that it fortifies us with. I thank you that today you will think through my mind and you will speak through my lips and your people will hear and be blessed in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. I want you to get your Bibles up, raise it up. Shout out to Terry Jackson this morning and Stephan Turner. Good to know you're watching. All right. Let's raise our Bible up. Make this bold statement with me and say, this is my Bible. I am who this book says I am. That's who you are. Whoever this book says you are. I can do what this book says I can do. I can have what this book says I can have. And I thank God that today my life shall change. I'll never, ever be the same in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Shout out this morning to Vanika, my daughter, as I said, and to Kaysen, Adalen and Tayden. All right. Amen. Let's go in the word of God. And let's look at what the Bible says. We're dealing with part six. That's right. Part number six of a message entitled. He said it and he shall do it. He said it and he shall do it. Now that he we're talking about is God almighty. God almighty said it and he shall do it. You and I sometimes when we say things we have to depend on what other people say and do in order to bring what we're saying to pass. However, God is strong enough, powerful enough, great enough to do what he said. When he said it, 
he understands when he said it and spoke it out of his mouth. He understands that he has to have the ability to do what he said. Let's look at Numbers 23 verses 19 and 20. Now, we said to you, 2021, no matter what anybody else is saying, I heard the Lord speak to me just like I did last year in 2020. I heard the Lord say that this will be our more season taken from Psalms 115 verses 14 and 15. So it's still our more season. It's still a time when God is going to provide. God is going to increase his people greatly. God got increase on his mind for his people, spiritual increase, first of all, and then natural increase. Second, amen. We always want to keep spiritual things first and then the natural. Amen. We always concerned about our spiritual growth, our spiritual enrichment, our spiritual enlightenment. That's why we come to the house of God. That's why you now are watching us on Facebook Live each and every Tuesday night at 730 each and every Thursday at seven o'clock and each and every Sunday morning at 1015. Watch us learn, grow, develop into that man of God or that woman of God that God has ordained for you to be. Listen at Numbers 23, 19 and 20. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? In other words, God is good in bringing to pass his promises. He going to make his word good because if his word is not upheld, then that makes him a liar. Verse 20. Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he hath blessed and I cannot reverse it. I told you this is a story that the prophet Balaam is out here as a prophet of God, and he is being uh, pushed by Balak, who is the king, a man, a wicked king, who wants him to curse the Israelites. But God commanded him to go down there and bless the Israelites because the Israelites were God's chosen people. Israel, and uh, who we understand his name was Jacob. God changed his name from Jacob to Israel, which means you got power with God and man. And the Israelites were God's covenant people. They were in covenant with God through the circumcision of their flesh. We know now that the circumcision is not of the flesh or the outer skin of the male, but it is the circumcision of the heart. It is God changing our hearts. And that's one thing our nation needs. Our nation, the people in it, amen, need to repent and allow God to change our hearts. Because when the heart is changed, then that person outward behavior will change because he has a new spirit. The Bible said it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new and all things are of God. Shout out to Jaquarius board. All right, my nephew, you keep watching, nephew. I mean, Jaquarius uh, board, my nephew and Andrea. Andrea. All right. Vanika's friend, one of Vanika's close friends. And shout out to Jay Armstrong. All right, Jay. Hadn't seen you in a while up here. Hope you're doing well. All right. Numbers 23, 19 and 20 in the easy translation. In the easy translation, it says God is not a man. He does not tell lies. If he promises to do something, it happens. He told me that I must bless the Israelites. He had blessed them. So I must do it too. So we are in the kingdom. Those of us who are saved and God's good hand is on our lives and God hath blessed us. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter one, verse three, the Bible said that he hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. We are blessed because God has pronounced his blessings on us. And I'll show you that, and prove that to you in the word in a few minutes. Let's go to Isaiah 55, 11 in the easy translation. I'm going to move a little fast because I covered a lot of this. It says this. It is the same 
when I give my word to people, it will not return to me without any results. The King James Version said it won't return to him void or empty. In other words, when God's word has gone out and we can find it in the Bible, the written word of God, then it will bring about a result if we mix our faith with it and believe God's report. Believe what God said. He's no, my word does what I want it to. Watch this. What I promised to do will certainly happen. So we see that Isaiah 55, 11 in the easy translation said, what I promised to do will certainly happen. Notice the easy translation of numbers we read a while ago. It said, if he promised to do something, it happens. So we can expect God to do what he says. Man might change his mind. Man might say, well, I was going to do it, but this came up. Well, I was or I thought I was going to be able to do it. But I, this right here, circumstance change what I was about to do. Amen. Now, it's disheartening anybody who has ever had somebody make a promise to them and then they don't keep their word on that promise. You know how disappointed you are. You know how disheartened you are. Well, God will not allow us to be disheartened or disappointed in him because that will create a distrust. And God wants us to be trusted. Think about it on your coin. Amen. On your money. It says what? In God we trust. Sad to say. Many people in this nation don't trust in God. They trust in their money. They trust in land. They trust in houses. They trust in those things that can shift, those things that can change. But God is the same. God remains faithful. God remains reliable. God remains dependable. We can trust God at all times. We can therefore bless him at all times because we can trust him at all times. Let's go to Genesis 21 and one. The Bible said the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Now, those of you who read the Bible, you know that Sarah was her name, but God changed the name from Sarah to Sarah, change Abraham's name, amen, into Abraham from Abram. Changed it from Abram to Abraham, Sarai to Sarah. And God promised to make this woman, amen, the, uh, 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 give this woman rather a child. And God visited her and she had that child, amen, her and her husband, Abraham. At first, because she was getting old, her womb dried up, she began to try to push Abraham and did push Abraham into sleeping with her handmaiden, Hagar, and they had a child. She was thinking maybe God really didn't mean me. Maybe he meant my handmaiden. But no, God meant Sarah. And God told Abraham, hey, that's all right. I'm going to take care of your son Ishmael, but he's not the seed of promise. He's not what I promised to do. Sarah, your wife is going to have a child. And that's what happened. She had that child whose name was Isaac, whose name means laughter. God's promises will always cause laughter to come into our hearts or to come into our lives. So God wants to do what he said and bring to pass his promises so we can rejoice and laugh about what he's doing in our lives. Shout out to Veronica, uh, as well as your husband, Michael. I mean, your husband, Anthony, and your little son, Michael. Hey, Michael, how are you this morning? Hope you're doing well on a Sunday morning. He's up watching with us. Thank God for it. Shout out to Jessica and shout out to Jordan Brown. All right. That's Gary's sister. All right, Jordan. Way to watch. Amen. Get mom and dad to watch, too, as well. God's going to do what he promised. Good things that God promised to do for your life. Remember, Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have life, have it more abundantly. Another translation said you might live it to the full till it overflows. Satan wants our lives to be miserable. He's always trying to bring trouble, always trying to bring hardships, always trying to bring something that will make us worry or get upset. But God wants us to walk in peace 
And God wants us to trust what he said he was going to do in our lives. Now, he said that he will increase us more and more. He said that he will make us fruitful, that he will multiply us. Let's look at it. Go to uh, Hebrews 6, 13 and 14. Hebrews 6, 13 and 14 says, for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself saying, surely blessings, I will bless thee and multiplying, I will multiply thee. See, God promised Abraham saying in blessings, I'm going to bless you in multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. And again, the scripture says, because God could not swear by nobody greater than himself, he swore by his own self, saying, surely I will do this. So God has promised to bless us because we are the seed of Abraham. Those of us who are saved. If you're not saved today can be your day to get saved and get on the side of the Lord. And when you get on God's side, you become the seed of Abraham. And when you accept Jesus Christ, you become the seed of Abraham. Therefore, God has to bless you. God has to multiply you. It doesn't matter what you got right now. He promised to give you more. No matter what uh, amount of money or what amount of success you may think you have, God promised to give you more. All right. Listen at Galatians 3 and 29. Galatians 3 and 29. It says, if you be Christ or if you belong to Jesus Christ, how do you get to belong to Jesus Christ? You get saved. You give your heart, soul, mind to the Lord. You surrender to your life to the Lord. He said, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In other words, he's saying, because you belong to Jesus, you belong to that family or that lineage of Abraham. And because you're Abraham's seed, you have an inheritance. You are an heir according to that same promise. In other words, God made that promise to Abraham and to his seed. And he did not say seeds as a many. He said seed as a one pointing us to Jesus. But since you belong to Jesus, then that belongs to you. So the promises that he made to Abraham are ours. So God must multiply me. God must give me blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings because why? I am the seed of Abraham. How did I become the seed of Abraham? By belonging to Jesus Christ. Shout out to Bernie Cherry this morning. Glad to, I mean, Benny. All right, Benny Cherry, brother Benny. All right, glad to know you're watching. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 3. Let's not Deuteronomy 6 and 3. All right. The scriptures are at the bottom of the screen. If you're watching this on Facebook. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, it won't be there. But if you're watching this on Facebook live, Deuteronomy 6 and 3 says, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee. Listen at what God said. And that you may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers had promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. When God brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt, God promised to take them into a land flowing with milk and honey. God, in other words, wanted to increase them mightily. So when God brought me and you or you and I out of sin or out of the world of darkness, out of the world of ignorance, out of a world where people were serving the devil. And you and I used to be the children of the devil because until you get saved, you are the devil's property. And he will lie to you and cause you to do crazy things, crazy activity because he wants you to participate in all that. So when you surrender your life to Christ, you no longer are under the jurisdiction or the authority of Satan. You belong to God. You're God's child. You're God's son. You're God's daughter. And since you belong to God, God must increase you mightily. Take you into a land of overflow. Take you into a land of abundance. Now, you don't have to figure it out. All he's asking you to do is believe it. All he's asking you and I to do is walk by faith and not by sight. God is able to bring his own word to pass. Well, when God, when you said this, didn't you know I was brought up and born in the project? It didn't matter. God said it. He must perform it. 
Well, God, when you said this, didn't you know that, hey, I didn't have much at the beginning? Yes, but I still said I'm going to increase you mightily and I'm going to multiply you. So in other words, that's God's responsibility now to perform what he said. My responsibility is to believe it, is to trust him, is to know that he would not have said it if he could not do it. I don't care who don't have a job. God can bless you with one and give you favor on it and cause increase to happen. God will give you houses you didn't build, wells you didn't dig, and you will be standing around and have people confounded because God is keeping his word. God is not a man that he should lie. God does not tell lies. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. All right. Let me read this to you in the message Bible. It says, listen obediently, Israel. Israel, again, was God's people. So we are God's people. Let's listen obediently. Do what you're told so that you will have a good life, a life of abundance and bounty, just as God promised in a land abounding in milk and honey. Did you see that? God says, listen, do what you're told so you can have a good life. See, we have to obey God. We have to do what God told us to do. When you give your tithes and offerings, you're doing what God told you to do. And if you do what God said for you to do, then God's going to do what he said he would do. He said, if you bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse, that there will be meat in his house. He's promised, he promised to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive. So don't listen at folks who are saying, well, that tithing stuff don't work. Shut them up. I'm, I'm a living example that it works. My wife and I are living examples that it works. Amen. Our local church is a living example that it works. We are a debt-free church. My wife and I are debt-free. We owe no man nothing but to love him. I'm here to tell you, God will move supernaturally for your life. You will see God give you favor and open up doors. Well, I'm getting way ahead of myself. God wants to do what he said. This is the year, we said, to boast and to be boosted by God's faithfulness or the faithfulness of God. What did I say? This is a year to boast or brag on the faithfulness of God. See, I know y'all think that it's just man giving these people these stimulus checks. That ain't just a man thing. That's God bringing his people to a place of more than enough. That's God turning the hearts of men in a way that will lift up people so that people who are trusting God. Because, see, most of God's people, if you study the Bible, most of God's people were always was, uh, were people who started at the bottom and then God took them to the top. Look at people now. Most of the people that you see, a lot of them that are black, especially started from nothing. God blesses them and then they forget God. God tells us and warns us and challenges us. Do not forget. That is the Lord thy God, that's Deuteronomy 8 and 18, that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his, his covenant that he swore unto your fathers. So God said, I'm going to give you ability. I'm going to give you the ability to get houses you didn't build, wells you didn't dig. I'm going to make you the head, put you above only, not beneath. When I do all these things for you, don't think you done it without me. Give me the credit. Don't forget me. Don't forget that I'm the one that gave it to you. See, everything you got right now that's good, that's wholesome, God did that for you. You may not know it, but God did that for you. Even those of you who are watching that are not saved. God, anything, and if you got a job, you got a car, you got a house, got some money, God did that. If it was up to Satan, you would have nothing. Because he come to steal, he come to kill, he come to destroy. But Jesus wants you and I to have and be blessed and to go into a land 
flowing with milk and honey or overflow, but then remember him. Think about him. Give him praise when you get up in the morning. Give him thanks and then read his word and challenge other people to get saved, to belong to God, to get in the family of God. Shout out to Danette Patterson and Dwight Strong. All right, let's go to Psalms 89, verses 33 through 35. Psalms 89, verse 33 through 35. All right. Shout out to Minister Danny. All right. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. Now listen at verse 34. Psalms 89, verse 34 says, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. God made promises to David. He kept them. God made promises to Abraham. He kept them. God made promises to Noah. He kept them. God made promise to Israel. He kept them. He made some to us and he's going to keep them. And that's why we're saying to you, he said it and he shall do it. God promised this. That's why you get in this word and see what God said. If you if, if you listen at me, I promise you this. I promise you this because God promised to do it for you. I promise you, if you are a person that every time you get paid, you give your tithes to the kingdom of God and offering to the kingdom of God. Do it from your heart. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because you want to bless the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of God stuff continues to advance. And I'm here to tell you, if you do it consistently, I'm here to tell you, God will do what he said. I'm telling you, if you don't miss it, no matter what your finances look like, don't miss it. My wife and I have been practicing this, amen, ever since we've been married. And I'm here to tell you, glory to God, ever since, well, I, yeah, we were doing it before I even married her, amen, and uh, I've been practicing. When I got saved, I learned the tithing and offering principle. And I'm telling you, whoo, God has done it. God has done it, amen. In the natural, this house that we're living in right now, we couldn't afford that in the natural, amen, over a million dollar home. Amen. But God, God blessed us with it. And we didn't pay no million dollars for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Way, way less. God made it possible. Gave us favor. In fact, when we were signing the closing deal, the lawyer who was white said to us, if I knew this house would be sold at this price, I would have got it. He knew it was a miracle. It's a miracle home. And we give God the glory for it. We give God our first house that we got was a miracle home in the natural. The lady told my wife and I told us the realtor said, y'all need to settle for something less. Y'all, 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 you Bishop Sharp, you cannot afford this house based on your salary and your wife's salary. So what y'all need to do is y'all gonna have to lie about your salary. I told the lady, if I lie to get it, I gonna have to lie to keep it. We're not going to tell no lie. Amen. She was showing us uh, homes and stuff in other neighborhoods. My wife was steadfast. She said, uh uh, God wants us to have this house. That man, because why? She wanted it. And we put our faith together, and I'm going to tell you what happened. God did it. Supernaturally, God made the realtor and the company take way less money so we could get in the house. God moved in a supernatural way. Why? Because God will do what He said. God promised. To make us the head. He promised to do this. So God ain't, God ain't gonna lie. All right. Listen at 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 55 through 57. I'm giving you a scripture so you can look at the written word and be encouraged. Listen, 1 Kings 8, 55 through 57. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be the Lord that have given rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised. What is God going to do? According to all that he promised. Remember, when people make promises to you, you don't make them make promises. They make them on their own free will. All you're doing is holding them to what they said. All right? There has not failed 
one word. Get this. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. The Lord, our God, be with us. And he was with as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us. See, God promised to never leave me, never forsake me. Other people might leave me. Other people might walk out on my life. Have you had people say, I'll be right there. I won't never go to where I'll be by your side. Boom, left, didn't it? But God is not like that. If God said never leave you and never forsake you, he meant never leave you and never forsake you. Now we can leave him, but he won't leave us. Amen. People walk away from God. God will stand by you through the thick, through the thin, through trouble, through good times, through bad times. God is a God that keepeth his word. He's a God that will not alter the thing that has gone out of his lips. So you and I owe it to ourselves to read the Bible, to study the Bible, to learn what God said. And know that this is what we can expect him to do. Notice the scripture said not fail one word of all his what? Good promises. See, I don't understand how people don't want to read this book. It's a holy book. It's the Bible. Bible means book. And it's called the holy book or holy Bible. Now, there are good promises in here. Promises. Oh, my God. I told you. If you don't think it's good promises, get your Bible. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 through 14. Get your Bible. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 through 14. Now the rest of that is going to go into those curses. Those are bad things. But read verses 1 through 14. Go in your Bible. Read your Bible. Read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. That's a good promise. Read Psalm 55 and 22 that says, cast thy burden upon the Lord. He will sustain thee. That's a good promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible is full of precious promises. And these precious promises, he must do them. Shout out to Patrice Marshall. All right. That's another one of Vanika's friends. All right. Way to go, y'all guys. Now, listen, God's going to do what he said. What did he say he's going to do for us? He said he's going to increase you. Listen at me, young lady. God's going to make you, if you are saved, if you are Christian, God's going to make you a debt free woman. That's a promise from God. That's a promise. It's, it's in your Bible. It's a promise from God. Now, you don't know how. You got to use wisdom. You got the budget you got to do. But God promised if you are his child to make you debt free. Where do you get that from? I told you Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14. God said you will lend. You will lend. Not be borrowing, but you will lend. That's what my wife and I, we stood on that. We start out in an apartment. We start out. <laughs> we didn't even have furniture in it. We had a cardboard box and we put our we ate our first meal. I was working amen, at CDC. My wife had just moved, brought her down here from Reedsville, North Carolina. Later on, she got a job. Amen. Working with the school system. But before she did, amen, we, we just enjoyed sitting on a pillow, ate our first meal on a cardboard box with a towel on it. But we knew God promised us that we would lend and not borrow. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. We didn't have no TV. We acted like we were seeing one. I told her, I said, go there and, and turn the channels to the TV. Amen. And uh, she did it just like uh, I said. And God supernaturally blessed us with our first te television set. A lady who had listened at me on radio. I was on radio at the time. Heard me on radio and for some strange reason, we had never told nobody that we need a TV or nothing. She said the Lord told her, won't part of our ministry, won't even in our ministry. Said the Lord told her that she was to give that man this, uh, what they call it, floor model television. 
You know, back then, floor model was a style. And she gave us a big floor model television. The brother brought it over to our apartment. Amen. She kept a smaller one and said the Lord told her. And it was the Lord too. Amen. Hallelujah. What I'm trying to tell you, because we were tithing, because we were giving, God would do what he said. He promised to make you a lender and not the borrower. That's a promise. You stand on it. You don't have to figure it out. You can't figure it out. Just trust God. That's part of your promises. All right. Now, God is faithful. Let's get into this. God is faithful part because I want to get into that a lot today. Somebody say that with me. God is faithful. Faithful means he's reliable. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. Like you on a job. You go to work each and every every time and it's time for you to go to work. What what you make yourself a faithful person. And the Bible said in Proverbs 28 and 20. Proverbs 28 and 20 says a faithful man shall abound in blessing. The word abound means to increase in blessings. So if you're faithful, if you're reliable, you're going to continue to increase in blessings, especially if you're faithful to God. Listen at Deuteronomy 7 and 9. It says, know therefore that the Lord thy God, again, he's our God. He is God. That means he's above everybody. The faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. See, we love God and we keep his commandments. We obey him. We obey what he said in his word. He told us what? To love him with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Why? So he can perform his good promise. So he can perform his word in our lives. Let me read it to you in the message Bible. I'm reading a portion of it. It says a God you can depend upon where it says faithful God in the King James in the message Bible. It says a God you can depend upon. Hallelujah. Shout out to Wayne Evans, Jr. Amen. A man of God that went to college with us at Shaw University, a Shaw alumnus. Hallelujah. Shout out to you, sir. Amen. All the way from Delaware. Glad to know you, you're watching this morning. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation taken you. There, in other words, no trial, no test, no adversity taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, stuff you face and go through in life, everybody else go through those same types of things. But here's the difference between you and them. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you those of us who serve him, those of us who walk with him, you to be tempted above that you're able. But we are with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, that scripture is telling us not that God is putting stuff on us. It's telling us that God will always give us a way out. Anything you face as a Christian, a promise from God is that he's going to bring you out. The Bible said it this way in Psalms 34 and 19. You can look at it on your own spare time. Psalm 34 and 19 says, it says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. So everything I go through in life, I expect God to bring me out, bring me out with victory. Because the Bible said, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. And this year, 2021, we're standing on Numbers 23, verses 19 and 20. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God speaks, he must perform it. The Bible said Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Believing that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. You don't have to walk around wondering, am I going to make it? Wondering how I'm going to do this? One, no, 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 no. Don't live like that. You're a child of the king. You know how you're going to make it. You know everything going to be all right. Because the Bible said all things work together for the good to them that love God and are the call according to his promise. I mean, according to, amen, and are the call according to 
his purpose. Amen. So it is the purpose of God, the will of God that's being wrought and done in your life. Shout out to Limwood Willer. All right, let's go to Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 and 23. Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 and 23. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So God's faithfulness is going to bring us through. God is faithful. God is reliable. God is dependable. You can rely on God. You can depend on God. You might can't depend on everybody else, but you can depend on God. God will be by your side. God will stand with you. So you can boldly say, the book of Hebrews said, that the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Who is man? Man can't stop God. Man, no white man can stop you from being debt free. No black one man can stop you from being debt free. Nobody on your job can stop you. Because why? You put your trust in God. And when you trust in God, the Bible said it this way. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God didn't say they wouldn't be formed. But he said they wouldn't prosper. They wouldn't push forward. They wouldn't make any headway in your life because God is on your side. The Bible said if God be for us, who then can be against us? So God is on my side. God is my light. God is my rock. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. That's Psalm 46 and 1. What am I saying? I'm quoting these scriptures to you because the same way I learned them is the way you got to learn them. You got to open your Bible, start reading it and meditating in it day and night. Then you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. You won't be moved by what's going on in the world system. You won't be moved by the economy. You won't be moved by the pandemic because you got a promise from God. You got a promise from God. Shout out to Larry Galloway. Amen. All the way from Reedsville. Amen. One of uh, my lovely wife's classmates. All right. Let's go to Psalms 119, 138. Psalms 119, 138. It says, thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. This is Psalms 119 verses one, um, verse 138. So God's testimony, the thing that God has declared are righteous and very faithful. They're going to perform, going to bring the past what it said. Amen. See, God's word has power to produce. It's like a seed. If you get apple seed, where did the apple tree come from? It came out of the apple seed. The apple tree was in the seed. So God's Victory or what he said is in what he said. <laughs> Do you get what I said? What God said is in what he said. So when God said it, that word is alive, it's quick, it's powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. That word contains the ability to bring to pass what God said. So when God said, let there be light. Darkness could not overcome it and could not resist it because when God said, let there be light, boom, light, light came. When God said, boom, it was so. Whenever God said it, boom, it was performed. So when God said, you're going to be debt free, you will owe no man nothing. All you need to do is believe that and start confessing. My wife and I used to tell people all the time, we're going to be debt free. We won't owe no man nothing. We won't owe no man nothing. Amen. We say our car is going to be paid off. People look at us like we were crazy. Amen. Now we've trained the local church where our pastor. Amen. They, these saints get their cars paid off, get their houses paid off because I tell them you are being called to be debt free, not based on the color of your skin, not based on your salary, because your salary, oftentimes your job only pays you enough to just do certain things. That's why they don't want to raise the minimum wages. See, it's, it's a trick of the enemy to keep people down, to keep people owing people and owing people and owing people. That's why they give you what they call a stimulus check. It ain't to bless you. Amen. They gave it to you. 
to stimulate the economy, to get you to go out here and buy something you can't afford. They giving you fourteen hundred dollars, but they want you to get something that costs fifty five thousand. So you have to borrow. But you got to be smart. You got to be wise. You got to recognize you don't need a new car every year. You got to recognize sometimes you got enough clothes. You got enough clothes in your closet. All you got to do is switch it up. That's what I do. Amen. That's what I've done for years. I switch up stuff. I take this suit, switch it up, change the tie, change the handkerchief and everything. Because I ain't got to keep right on spending my money on clothes. I got to get my money and put it in the bank, save me some. Amen. Help my daughter, uh, grandbabies as they get old to leave a legacy behind. Because the Bible said a good man leave it an inheritance, amen, for his children's children. That means I got to have a lot of money so that it will bless my children. They may not know who I was and might not have seen me, but they'll know I existed when they get them month, get that money. You hear what I'm saying? See, our parents didn't live like this. They only live for the day. And that's why when they died, they left us broke, busted, and disgusted. But that ain't the way you're supposed to leave here. When you leave here, you ought to leave a house behind, some land behind, some money behind, some for the next generation to build on. White people been doing this for years. It's time for us as black people to wise up. Stop spending all your money on rims. Stop spending all your money on stuff that don't that don't uh, accrue wealth, that don't generate wealth. Amen. You got to be wise. They always going to have some something out here to get your attention, to make you spend money foolishly. Amen. You don't have to get the latest sneakers. You got some nice ones already on your feet, but you got to feel like you got to buy them. Forget that. Let's be a money. Let's be a wealth. Let's create something. Amen. And pay off the bills we already got so we can be debt free. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Oh, my, 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 my. Kushata. Glory. Let's go to Titus chapter one, verse nine. Titus chapter one, verse nine. It says, holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. In other words, he said, hold fast the faithful word. This word is faithful. It's reliable. It's dependable. If God tells you to live like this, then you live like this because it's going to pay off. Think about it. people getting drunk. All this craziness. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, the coach now got to concentrate on a game knowing that his son just recently was driving drunk and he claimed to have had medication in him, but he probably just drunk. Amen. And ended up hurting children in another automobile. Now, think about it. The Kansas City coach got to try to coach the game, knowing his son now got in all this kind of trouble. See, that's why the devil worked. That's why we tell people, you don't need to drink no wine, no beer, or nothing. Drink you some Kool-Aid, drink you some uh, 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 tea, and drink you some water. Amen. Hallelujah. A uh, soda, amen. And I try to tell people don't drink too much soda because it's not good for your body. And you got to be concerned about your health. All right. I got to quit. Amen. But I'm going to read Revelation 21 and 5. It says, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. See, the word of God is true and it's faithful. It's reliable. Now, in the book of Revelation, God promised and said many, many things. But every last one of those things will happen. Every last one of those things will come to pass. God is a God who is faithful. And that's what we're trying to tell you. And we're going to deal with some more with some scriptures that relate to faithfulness. Amen. And one more. Can I get one more? I'm going to get one more and that'll be it. Uh, I'm going to read it to you in different trend. Well, no, if I get to doing that, I'll read it in those translations and I want to I want to stop. Amen. All right. What do you think? OK, I'm going to go ahead. First, I'm going to just read this one scripture. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses 23 and 24. It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly or entirely or completely. And I pray God your whole spirit. And soul and body be preserved, blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. What is God faithful to do? To keep my soul, keep my, keep my spirit, keep my soul, and keep my body. 
See, my body doesn't belong to me. My body belongs to God because I'm saved. And everything that I got and everything I am belongs to God now. See, and this God's responsibility It ain't just my house. It's, it's, it's God's house because all of it belongs to him. That's why, amen, we don't play crazy music in here. We only play gospel music. Why? Because we're going to keep this place right for God. Amen. And God don't want us playing that crazy music in our house or in our car. He wants us playing gospel music in our house and in our car. Something that would make us put our attention on him. Something that would make us put our focus on him and bring his glory in our midst. If you play that other kind of music, guess what it's going to do? It's going to bring demonic powers in, which is going to mean you giving place to the devil. See, you can't see the devil, but the devil is real. The devil is out here giving people thoughts to kill people, to rape people, to shoot people. Just the other day on the news, they were showing this man that he was out there in his yard with his wife shoveling snow. But in shoveling the snow, they were shoveling the snow on the other man's property. The man came out, told him, do not shovel snow on my property. The man and his wife start talking junk to him and everything else. Amen. The man went and shot her. Amen. She talking about go ahead and shoot me. He pointed the gun at her, shot her. Amen. Then shot the husband. Amen. Then came back, got a bigger gun and shot him again, made sure they were dead and then killed himself. Now, who was behind all that, y'all? The devil. The devil was behind every last bit of that. Amen. So we need to trust God and put our faith in God. Amen. Over some snow. Amen. Can you imagine that? Amen. And left a 15 year old child back here without a mama and a daddy over some snow. Amen. They should have just responded. Once the man came out, said, OK, if you don't want me, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't mean to put no snow on your yard. Acted respectful. Amen. So we have to recognize people are dealing with pressure now. They're dealing with a lot of stress. And so you have to be very careful the way you deal with people now, with your tongue and with your mind and with your life. You better be careful the way you deal with people now because they're dealing with pressure and stress. And some people don't have God in their life and they're not leaning on God. They're leaning to their own understanding and they're about to go off. They're about to snap. But we can pray for them and we can believe that they'll be all right, that their mind will be kept, that they'll be all okay. We got to pray for everybody around. When you go to that job, don't just go there. If you were at a back in those jobs, you better go there with prayerfulness. Pray. Before you go in there and say, Father, keep these people today, keep their minds, keep their hearts. You better just go in there with prayer in these hospitals and all these places. You better go in there with prayer. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, the last days me and heart are failing them because of looking at stuff on the world. Thank you for watching us today. I have many scriptures. I'm going to take. Uh, OK, can I go to translation? First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 24 in the literary, Young's literary translation says steadfast is he who is calling you who also will do it. The Amplified Version says, faithful is he who is calling you to himself. Here it is. And utterly trustworthy. And he will also do it. Fulfill his call by his, by hollowing and keeping you. See, God gonna keep me. God gonna protect me. God gonna shield me. God gonna make sure I'm alive and safe and have the strength to do what he's assigned me to do. The easy translation said, God has chosen you to be his people. We can trust. Uh -huh, I read that. Amplified classic. I just read it. All right. Let me read the easy translation. It said, God has chosen you to be his people. We can trust him to do what he has promised to do. So he will do all this to you. That's I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to all the other translation. I, I hold them for next week. But I want you to know that God will do what he promised to do. All right. Okay, I got an outfit. My wife wants me to keep going with this. It's blessing. Okay, let me go with the translation. First Thessalonians chapter 5 in the Passion Translation. The one who calls you by name is trustworthy and will thoroughly complete his work in you. Again, who's trustworthy? Who do you trust? Who do you trust? Do you trust God or you trust man? Man will say, oh, oh, look, next, next month this time we're going to give you a raise. Then they change their mind. They're crooked, wicked, 
corrupt. But let me tell you something. God's still going to give you a raise this year. God's still going to give you a bonus this year. God's still going to give you this this year. Because why? He's going to bring you to a place where you trust him. Remember, I'm telling you, don't brag off the faithfulness of man. Boast on the faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Man don't even want to do it. Look what these Republicans are saying. We're not going to give them 1400 We just want to give them a little. See, this is, but look, look what God doing. Stepping in there, letting Biden say, wait a minute, we're going to give them 1400 This is God trying to say, hey, I'm the one you got to trust. Amen. It ain't Biden. It's God bringing people up out of the mess because the Bible said the poor and the rich are supposed to meet together. But a lot of people, they so rich, they don't care nothing about poor people, don't care nothing about lifting people up with their wealth. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me read this to you in the message translation. The message translation said the one who called you, watch this, is completely dependable. If he said it, good gracious almighty, he'll do it. Let me read it to you in the message translation because that's what we've been talking about. He said it, God said it, and he shall do it. Listen at this. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 24 in the Message Bible. This is the last scripture I'm giving you for today. I got many more scriptures, but I'm going to stop right here. Listen to what he said. The one who called you. See, God called you. When you, when, you, when you feel that tug on your heart to be saved, that's God calling you. The, the Greek word is kaleo, which means he's summoning for you. See, I got saved because I heard God calling me. I knew, man, I need to get saved. I need to stop drinking wine, smoking dope, amen, running wild. I need to get saved. <clears throat> Listen, the one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. What he's going to do? What he said. If he, if he said it. So that's why you go to the Bible and you read what the Bible said. That's why I'm telling you, read Deuteronomy 28. Read it, verses 1 through 14. And if you're a Christian, you claim that. If you're not a Christian, you need to become one, become one so you can claim verses 1 through 14. It's powerful, powerful stuff for you. Amen? It's powerful stuff for you. And also, you need to go to Leviticus, the 26th chapter, and read verses 3 through 10. What did I say? Leviticus, that's a book in the Old Testament, the 26th chapter, read verses 3 through 10. Powerful stuff concerning your life. Powerful stuff concerning my life. You ought to read it. Leviticus 26, verses 3 through 10. God told me, he said, this is a, also part of the prophetic package for the people this year. Leviticus 26, verses 3 through 10. Read it. My God is awesome. What God going to do for you and I if we believe his word. He's faithful. He's faithful. I'm out of time, not out of message. I'll stop here. Next week, we're going to get back into more of God's faithfulness. And then I'm going to show you uh, about three or four things that the faithfulness of God releases. It releases about several things that we need to get into on next week. All right. Don't forget, hit that follow button. Hit that so you know whenever we come on. Every Tuesday night at 7.30, every Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and every Sunday morning at 10.15. Now, we're going to also be doing some special Sunday nights this month because this month is Black History Month. And we're going to get into some things about being black. We're going to talk about black history. And we're going to go into some some reach, some deep, deep uh, 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 material to help you out as a black man and a black woman in these times. Don't you, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be done. Probably we may start it uh, next Sunday evening at six o'clock. Amen. We may start our first teaching in it. Amen. Because again, this month is Black History Month. All right. Don't forget you desire to be saved. Give us a call at 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. Give us 10 minutes after this program is over. Call that number if you want to be saved. We want to lead you to Christ and help you understand what you have just done. All right, 
5382. So you can get all these promises that belong to his people. The Bible is a book written to a covenant people and we'll say and therefore it applies to us. These messages can be viewed again again on Facebook or on YouTube. You can go to uh, after this message go off about 10 minutes. You can watch us on YouTube. Amen. If you want to hear it again, because faith comment by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And some people don't have Facebook and you can tell them to watch it on YouTube. And we're just trying to get the word out. Amen. We also have 12 books that we've written. And if you're a woman, if you're a lady, you need our, our book called Amen. Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. It's a good book for women. Amen. And we're going to be doing talking uh, some women's stuff this year. Amen. We did some men's stuff last year. This year, God said, I want you to talk about some women's stuff. They're going to be a blessing to you. OK, women of substance taking new steps to new dimension. If you're a man, you need our book called I Am My Brother's Keeper, empowering men to take their place. We also have a wonderful CD that my lovely wife put together. It's called Determined. We talk about some good music. This is absolutely awesome. Y'all pray for her because she's written some other songs that we must, before we leave this earth, put in a CD so that our children's children can have this and pass it on to the next generation. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, our latest two books are entitled Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Pride. These are our latest two books. We just released them. Uh, last year in 2020, and we have one called Death, A Need to Understand. At the beginning of 2020, we came out with these books, Death, A Need to Understand, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. All right. Yes, it was March. Uh -huh. And it's, it'll be a blessing to you if you get these books. Uh, they're out now. Our 13th book is we, we're excited about it. I'm not going to show it to you today. I may show it to you next Sunday. Amen. Uh, but it, it'll be out and we're excited about it. It's a great way to be blessed. Now, you can order our books by calling the ministry at 252-641-0098. Again, we got 12 books, 12 books we've written and they are out to bless people. One called How to Overpower Discouragement. Another one called Seeking God Makes You Prosper. Another one called Sheep Taming Wolves. Another one called don't lose yours, trying to save theirs. I might teach a little bit on this on Valentine's Day weekend, uh, Valentine's Day week. Anyway, uh, the blessings of rejection, keys to surviving and enjoying the journey. Amen. And then one called spiritual upgrade. One called, uh, yeah, riding the back of a sore. Amen. Another one called, uh, where are those miracles releasing the power of God? And of course, those last two that I talked about. I mean, you can also order our books by cash app. Go to our cash app, hit the dollar sign, hit the letter R, hit the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. -E -E All right. And stress and say that this is not uh, and this is for the books and whatever book you want and our address. And we'll send these books out to you. Amen. All right. Or you can call us. At that number, 252-563-5382 and uh, yeah, for prayer, but also about the book. Oh, call the ministry, 252-641-0098 and ask about the prices and we'll, be, we'll get back with you. All right. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget, if you would like to give to our ministry, here's the way you give. The way you give to Newness of Life Christian Center is that good old fashioned way of pen and paper. You can get out a pen and paper and write us at Newness of Life Christian Center or NOLCC P.O. Box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Or you can again, that address is Newness of Life Christian Center P.O. Box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. 886. Or you can go to that technological way of giving is download the Give Plus Church app. Download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 Newness of Life Christian Center going to pop up and you can give. Again, we're good ground and we want to continue to reach out to people. We're on several television stations and also on several radio stations. So we want to reach out to the world. Amen. Our goal is to reach the world with the gospel. All right. 
All right. Again, download that Give uh, Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 Newness of Life Christian Center going to pop up. It's on the screen right now. Or if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I, go to the cash app again. Hit the dollar sign. Hit the letter R and type in the word determined. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. Hit that cash app. I mean, hit that. Uh, go to your cash app. Hit the dollar sign. Type in the letter R and then type in the word determined. D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. Thank you so much for watching today. And I pray that you will continue to have a blessed week. Amen. Again, today is Super Bowl Sunday. I pray that you have a Super Bowl week, that you have a wonderful week. Amen. Again, I'm going for the Kansas City Chiefs. Hopefully their uh, uh, homes are repeat. If not, amen. Hallelujah. What can we say? Amen. God ain't telling us who's going to win the Super Bowl. Amen. He got bigger fish to fry than that. So we thank God, amen, for watching today. Don't forget, tune in Tuesday, Bible study night. It's awesome each and every Tuesday at 730. Be blessed knowing that God wants to bring you through the storms of life because there's a storm out on the ocean and moving this away. And you need your soul anchored in Jesus because if it ain't anchored in Jesus, you will drift away. Amen. All rights and privileges go out again to Donna Brown, uh, Bishop Donna, uh, uh, Ronald Brown, I'm sorry. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! If your soul not anchored in Jesus, All right. God bless you. Have a great week.